Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. I want you to notice that in verse 18, it is set within three directions that Paul is giving to the church there in Thessalonica and also to you and I this morning and every day. He says, first of all, he says to rejoice always. Then he says, pray without ceasing. And then thirdly, he says, in everything, give thanks. Now, by focusing on just one of these three specific directions, I don't mean to separate Paul's words. But since we are at the doorsteps of our annual Thanksgiving Day for this year, I want us to focus on that last one, in everything give thanks. When we hear those words and when you read those words in Paul's letter to the church there in Thessalonica, to give thanks in everything, they sound good, don't they? They sound right. They sound biblical. And I'll even put it this way, they sound Christian. And they are all those things. But too many times may we, we may want to add the word but to the end of that sentence. Because it just isn't practical. And we tend to dismiss things that way, don't we? when they're not practical. Some of you hearing this message, you're thinking, that all sounds well and good and sounds nice, Pastor, and we ought to give thanks and everything, but it just won't work. The theory sounds good, preacher, but it just won't work. And this is a very difficult thing that, that Paul is asking for you and I to do, isn't it? Thanksgiving is easy when everything is going our way and when we're being blessed. But it can be difficult to do when we feel like we're in the midst of trials and heartaches and being tempted. But still, even in those things, Paul the Apostle wants you and I to give thanks. Amen? And matter of fact, Paul the Apostle is serious about this. Now, the things that I want you to see this morning that Paul lays out is this, and I'm going to list them first, then we'll get into them. But first thing that Paul says is this, in everything, give thanks. Okay? In everything. Secondly, he says what? He says, for this is the will of God for you. And then thirdly, he says this. He says, in Christ Jesus. Okay? So the first thing I want us to see is this. In everything, give thanks. Paul is telling us there what we are to do as believers. He is telling us that in every circumstance of life, we are to be thankful. Paul is saying, overall, our attitude must be one of thanksgiving. Now, our thanksgiving and our being thankful, it may be prompted from time to time by the goodness that are of our circumstances. But it's not to be limited to the goodness of our circumstances only. And that thanksgiving is to be grounded by some other source. And so in every circumstance, in every circumstance, whether it is good or bad, even if that circumstance is delightful or evil, beloved, by the inspiration of God, Paul writes, we are to give thanks. Now, I want to pause here, and I want us to notice what Paul does not say, okay? 
He does not say, for everything, give thanks. Did you get that? He doesn't say, for everything, give thanks. He says, in everything, give thanks. And there are some circumstances in our lives, and there are some circumstances in our lives, maybe this morning, that it would be improper to give thanks for them. You may find yourself on the receiving end of some kind of evil personal vendetta. God is not asking you to give thanks for that. Paul is not asking and saying to the people, you who lost loved ones, give thanks. And when I was preparing this sermon, I wanted to give it a for instance. And I thought back of October uh, 2018 at the shooting at the synagogue, Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where 11 people were killed. Paul is not writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and God is not saying to give thanks for your loved one being murdered. That's not what Paul is saying, to think or to do or to pray. But Paul is saying in every circumstance, no matter how much of a disaster it is, we are to give thanks. Just to give a personal little note here, when my mother passed away, and I lost my mom. I lost my dad earlier. Then I lost my mom. I had to give thanks for my mom, even in her time of death. Because, one, I knew where she was going to spend all eternity. She was going to spend all eternity where I'm hoping to go one day. Okay, when the Lord says, I'm done with you, Valley. So I thank God that she was there in heaven. Not that she died, but that because she did die, she went to heaven to be with her Lord. That's just a personal note, and I know many of you can voice the same personal opinion and have the same experience. But let me share with you another one. Many of you know the story of Helen Keller. Helen was born in 1882, and at the age of 19 months, think of this, at the age of 19 months, she caught a fever that left her without sight and without the ability to hear. And for 86 years, Helen Keller lived in a world of darkness and silence. And the only way, according to her words, the only way that she was able to cope with this circumstance circumstances was her trust in the living God. Now, beloved, if a person in her situation could be very tempted to become bitter and angry, couldn't they? Think of that, age 19 months, you lose those faculties. And you're that way for 86 years. I think a person in that condition, the last thing that, that would be on their agenda would be for that person to be grateful and thankful. But I want you to hear what Helen Keller said about her condition. And I want to quote her. She says, for three things I thank God every day of my life. One, thanks that he has granted me the knowledge of his works. Deep thanks that he has set in my darkness the light of faith. And thirdly, the deepest thanks that I have another life to look forward to, a life joys with light and flowers and heavenly song. End of quote. Now, Helen Keller may not be and may not have been thankful for the circumstance that God had dealt her but she was thankful in that circumstance. And that's why we read that scripture. And I, I stress that word in instead of for. And beloved, that is precisely what Paul the Apostle, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is saying, or the Holy Spirit is saying to you and I. In everything, 
in every circumstance, we are to give thanks. That brings us to point number two. Why should we give thanks? Well, Paul says in verse 18, he tells us, for it is the will of God for you to give thanks. Amen? Now, as students of the Bible, you know that the Bible has many, many scripture verses that gives us reasons that we are to be thankful to God. And while I'm not going to give you the exact text, I'll just tell you where they're at, and you're, there's your assignment for Thanksgiving. By Thanksgiving, you look them up, and you read them, and you thank God for them. But in the psalmist, we learn that we give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. We thank God because the sovereign God of heaven and earth is not some sort of tyrant with a bad sense of humor. He is a loving God that is good and cares for you. He is good and he cares for me. The psalmist also tells us that, that we are to thank the Lord because he watches over us and he protects us and he spares us. The psalmist also tells us that we are to thank God because he redeemed us. If nothing else, all the other blessings of life were taken away, beloved. Listen, if you and I were de redeemed, if you and I are saved, that is enough for you and I to thank God for for the rest of our lives here on this earth. All the rest, to use it in a modern term, is just icing on the cake. If I have nothing else but I have my salvation, that's enough for me to thank God for. But we're to thank God because not only does he redeem us, but beloved, think of this. He loves, and I want to get personal here. He loves you. He loves me. Two people, you and me, that does not deserve his love, but he does. The psalmist says that we are to thank God because he gives us good gifts. He establishes justice and he shows mercy. The Bible has a whole category of things for that which we ought to give thanks. And not just one day a year, but every day of our lives. We give thanks because it is the will of God for you. It is the will of God for me. And let me tell you this and please don't miss this this morning that verse there in verse 18 of chapter 5 of 1st Thessalonians for it is the will of God for you the way it is written there in scripture beloved it is a command it's not just when good things happen or fun things happen oh thank you God for this thank you God for this because Everything in life is just going, and here's a deep word, everything's going hunky-dory. That's not just when you give thanks to God. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to give thanks because it is the will of God for you and for me? It means that God wants you to give thanks in everything, and therefore, guess what? We're to do it, because he's telling us to. When I was preparing this message, I didn't know whether to add this or not, but then I, I said, told myself I wasn't going to do it, but then now that I'm behind God's desk, it's almost like God saying, yeah, you share, because I want you to, I want you to drive that point home. You remember when you were little, and you sat down for dinner, and your mom looked at you and said, eat the Brussels sprouts. And you said, I don't like Brussels sprouts. And she said, eat them anyway. And what did you do? You ate them. Now, that's a simplistic thing, but God is telling you and I to obey him and to give thanks in all things, for it's God's will for you. So we are to just do it. Amen? Because, listen, if you don't follow his command, then you're breaking his command. And if you're breaking his command, then you're sinning against Almighty God. <laughs> 
But I believe it has a little bit more of a meaning, and it means something else. It means that God's grand desire is to create a joyful and rejoicing people. I believe that's God's plan, part of his plan. Not all of it, but part of it is for you and I to be joyful and to rejoice. His purpose for his believers, his followers, is not to create shriveled up, ungrateful, grudging, miserable people. I'll tell you what, beloved, I've said this for many, many years. You show me a Christian who is not happy, who is grumbling all the time, who is miserable all the time. You have just shown me somebody who is out of the will of God, and they're not walking with God. Because you can't walk with God and be grumbling, miserable, and all that stuff. Because if you're really, truly walking in obedience to God, you're going to be rejoicing. And you're going to be thankful for Almighty God. Amen? One of the elements of God's grand design in the work of redemption is, I believe, to enlarge our hearts to show the world, okay, what humanity was intended to be like in the very first And the very first thing that humanity ought to have been in view of the greatness of our Creator's gift is to be thankful. Paul is also saying that even though you live in a fallen world, and beloved, you know this as much as I do, all you got to do is look at the newspaper, all you got to do is listen to the news on the radio or watch TV, and you know we live in a fallen world. But even though we live in a fallen world, and in which there are many things not to be thankful for, that should not overshadow your experience or my experience in the things that we ought to be profoundly thankful. Therefore, it is God's will and His plan to create in you, to create in me a heart large with thankfulness, and therefore we ought to give thanks. Number three. How do we give thanks? Now, I know some of you this morning, you may be thinking, Pastor, look, you just don't know my circumstance. You don't know what I'm going through. And I'm here standing before you this morning, and I'll tell you to your, to your eyes, you're right, I don't understand all of your circumstances. I don't. I don't have a clue of the circumstance in which God has called you to give thanks in. In some of your lives, I have a little inkling, but I have no idea how great of a challenge it is for you to give thanks in those circumstances. And to be perfectly honest with you, some of you don't know or have any idea how great of a challenge it is for me to give thanks at some times, even as pastor. But the apostle tells us how, and it's here in just three words, that we are to give thanks. In Christ Jesus. Beloved, it is only possible to express thanks to God in everything if you have a faith relationship with Jesus Christ, and if you are in Christ. It is only in and through Jesus Christ that we are to be able that we are able to give thanks in every circumstance. In Christ Jesus. We give thanks because it is the will of God for you, for me, In every circumstance. Not for every circumstance, but in every circumstance. We'll close with this statement this morning. It's a statement by Augustine that he said many, many years ago, even before I was born. And I want to quote him. Listen to what he says. He says, Lord, command what you will but give what you command. Did you hear that? 
Lord, command what you will, but give what you command. Now, what Augustine is saying is this. Lord, I cannot do the thing that you tell me to do. But you can command them, and then you can give me the ability to do what you have commanded me. Does that make sense? Lord, command what you will, but give what you command. Augustine was saying, Lord, I cannot do the things that you tell me to do, but you can command them, and then you can give me the ability to do what you command. The Apostle Paul says, you want to give thanks in everything? Then you trust in Jesus Christ. You rest in Jesus Christ. And when you find that when you are connected to the one who is the spiritual source of the ability to be thankful in every circumstance, then and only then, beloved, you will be able to give thanks in everything. Now, before I pray, let me encourage you. And I pray that you are thankful to God every day. I'm sure many of you are. But let's do this. Before Thanksgiving, you know, the day where we just sit and make a feast out of everything, let's take some time and truly, from the depths of our heart, Thank God for all that he's done for us in everything. Even what the world would consider the bad times, the tough times. We can give thanks in every circumstance because it is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we praise you. We praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you for the Lord Jesus Christ in whom we are able to give thanks in everything. Help us, Father, to obey your command. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's stand together and let's take our hymnal.